Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and the day we've been waiting for is finally here. The Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus are officially revealed. Now I say that a little bit ironically, obviously, because this phone was leaked everywhere, but it's okay, it's good to actually like see it in person now and feel it in the hand. So now that everything is officially official, this is everything you need to know about this new phone. First of all, from the very beginning, it was all about that display. Uh, the design, the lack of bezels, just the jaw-dropping edge-to-edge nature of that front panel, that's where Samsung went all in with this phone. So the Galaxy S8 is rocking a 5.8 inch 2960 by 1440 OLED display. And the S8 Plus is rocking a 6.2 inch OLED with the same resolution. So that's extremely sharp. And that's an 18 and a half by nine aspect ratio for those counting. So it's a little bit taller even than the two by one aspect ratio from the LG G6. So these are huge displays and very tall resolutions. Uh, but of course the footprint of these phones when you compare them to something with a more traditional larger bezel it's awesome. It fits in the footprint of a phone with a way smaller screen. Uh, they're calling it the infinity display. I'm calling it like the almost bezel-less look. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I really like it. Now, it's not a completely new concept. The Galaxy S7 Edge had the display glass melting over the edges already last year. But for some reason, that phone's edges always felt like, kind of sharp to me. Never really got quite comfortable with it. But the S8's edges here feel much softer. They're much more seamless feeling than before. Uh, which no doubt took a lot of careful engineering. And then of course they pushed the display further up to the top and further towards the bottom of the phone by getting rid of the physical buttons and replacing them with software buttons. So okay, finally, Samsung is actually now switching from hardware buttons on the bottoms and the chins of all their phones to the software on-screen buttons. That's great, I love them, but what does that mean we lose by switching? Well, first of all, Samsung's software buttons are not pretty. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I think they're pretty ugly. Uh, and they're also out of order. Like the back button should still be on the left, but luckily we can reorder these buttons in the software to switch the order if we want. Uh, we can't change the way they look, but there's that. And then you also lose a physical home button which had the fingerprint reader on it on the last phone. So the fingerprint reader now here moves up to the back of the phone and way up by the camera. This one is kind of a stretch and I actually don't mind, you know, fingerprint readers on the backs of phones. Like on the Pixel XL, for example, when I'm holding my phone in a normal reading position, the fingerprint reader is actually easily reachable. So I don't mind that, it's in the middle of the back. But these stretched out Samsung phones are a little bit taller. So even with my big hands, holding the S8 in a normal position puts the fingerprint reader just a little bit out of reach. So I have to stretch a bit to find it. And then with the S8 Plus, again, when it's way up at the top of the phone like this, if I just hold it normally and I turn the phone over, it's like completely out of place. And if I try to find it blind, there's not really a big indentation to know exactly where it is. So that's definitely something that's gonna take some getting used to. Many people I think will need to use two hands with this. In fact, in the official Samsung commercial, the dude does it with two hands. So that fingerprint reader placement is a little odd, but I think everything else about this hardware, Samsung pretty much hit it out the park. This finally feels like a 2017 or even 2020 futuristic smartphone design in the seamless, beautiful type of way that we dream of, but without sacrificing really any functionality or features. It's still thin and pretty lightweight phone. It still has USB type C at the bottom with fast charging. It still has a headphone jack. Uh, it's still fully IP68 water resistant still has wireless charging, still has a micro SD card slot for expandable storage. And with all that sandwiched between the sheets of metal and glass, the Galaxy S8 will also have pretty much some of the best specs you can find in any Android phone. So Snapdragon 835, four gigs of RAM, first phone in the world with Bluetooth 5.0, uh, and it brings the iris scanner also back from the dead from that Galaxy Note 7. My only question mark here is the battery. The only difference between the S8 and the S8 Plus is not any features, it's just the physical size. So the displays are different and the battery sizes are different. It's 3000 milliamp hours on the Galaxy S8 and 3500 milliamp hours on the S8 Plus. And a 3000 milliamp hour battery can seem decent, maybe a little bit small, but the number one draw of battery on a phone is the display. And it's so easy to forget while holding that this is a 5.8 inch display, it's huge. So a 3000 milliamp hour battery on a 5.8 inch display 
Not really too sure if that's gonna hold up. And then same thing with the bigger one. The S8 Plus is a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, which seems pretty decent size, but it's a 6.2 inch display. Not a lot of 6.2 inch display phones out there. And it's also a super high res, super bright display. I mean, that's gonna be a big draw. That's definitely something we're gonna be testing for the full review. Now the cameras on the back of this phone, as far as I can tell, are the same as the Galaxy S7 from last year. So 12 megapixel camera, F 1.7 aperture, optical image stabilization, the whole deal. It's high end and that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, that was a really good camera, but obviously that's not exactly pushing the limits here. It's just a pretty safe bet that will do you just fine. And then of course there's the software. A lot of people have mixed feelings about this stuff, including me. Obviously I like stock Android and this is not that. This is Samsung's UX on top of Android 7.0 with all their slightly redesigned colorful icons and launcher and everything here. Uh, it feels fine with the hardware. They have a new set of wallpapers to look pretty great on this display, and the home screen icons and widgets are a little tweaked, but overall it's nothing drastically different from before. There are some neat tricks up its sleeve, like there's this button that shows up when you're watching YouTube videos full screen that basically lets you do what the iPad does and punch in a little bit to fill the display if you really hate the black bars on the side, your call. Uh, obviously you can still rearrange the, the software buttons at the bottom, like I said. I'm sure we'll find even more stuff when we get to playing with this phone even more. But the biggest new software feature of the Galaxy S8 is actually its personal assistant called Bixby. And to me, it's a little bit confusing just the way it exists on the phone, at least to users, I think. So Bixby does all the same things that Google Assistant does, but by Samsung instead of by Google. So you can, it'll show you a bunch of cards in an order that's relevant to you. So it tries to show you information that it thinks is important before you need it. It's, it's really similar to Google Now and what Google does with the cards. You can access it by swiping over from your home screen, just like Google. And Bixby even has its own freaking button on the side of the phone. Look, power button on one side, then volume rocker and Bixby button on the other side. That's a big commitment. Now, to be fair, there were a bunch of other like image recognition and context recognition things uh, that they claimed Bixby could do, but they couldn't show us any of these things that's gonna be launching with the phone. But the funny thing is this is still an Android phone. It's still Android 7.0, which means it still also has Google Assistant on the phone. If you long press the home button, sure enough, you get Google Assistant popping right up. So it's weird, I got this S voice rebooted type of vibe with those two things doing the same thing existing next to each other on the phone. It's kind of a weird thing. Obviously we all know how S voice went down and I really hope that this isn't as bad as S voice. We'll give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll see when it launches. But until then, that's just kind of a cross your fingers and hope type of thing. So overall, as a package, the Galaxy S8 is pretty impressive. Promising, I might even say. Uh, to me, it looks like Samsung really picked their battles with this one. There are certain areas where they, they clearly really wanted to go all out and push the boundaries, the design, the display, and it shows, and it's, that's on the outside of the phone. But other areas where they're definitely not pushing forward too hard are also pretty obvious. The camera, the battery. But as an entire phone, I'm pretty optimistic for the Galaxy S8. So there you have it. That's everything that you need to know with this new flagship. It's coming out on April 21st. That's when you can be able to get it. Uh, feel free to share this video with anyone who you think might be interested in this bomb new flagship. Well, actually probably, hopefully not bomb. It might, I mean, it might be the bomb, but like not the bomb in that way. You know what I mean? I think you know what I mean. Thanks for watching. Expect a full review of this phone, obviously. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.